let's look at a few of the hurdlers. Um, Epiton, we saw her again this morning. She looks in, in good nick. Pleased with her? She's in very good form. Yeah, great. We're going down the old tried and tested route, which we did last... We did, I think we've done every year for the, the last four or five with... Well, they've all been JP's sort of champion hurdle contenders by starting with the fighting fifth, which Bouba Dare won a couple of times, Binocula won a couple of times, Epitant has. Mm. So I see no reason to branch away from the, the tried and tested route. It's a grade one and it's a good prize. Bit of a long way to go, but we'll live with that. Well, I suppose you, you won't have to worry about honeysuckle, will you? <laughs> <Up in the laughs> <castle>. Well, I'm <laughs> hoping, I mean, that's the whole point of, yeah. You wouldn't know what else is likely to turn up. But, yeah, if she's, you know, if we get her back to the form she was in last year, I mean, she was electric in it. And then sort of things slightly went wrong. But, again, we've corrected quite a few bits and pieces of anatomy. Do you, um, find, do you find with the mares it's a little, makes your job a little harder trying to get them at that peak fitness and try and maintain it for, for so long as well, trying to try and keep them happy? Well, again, she did it the year before. Um, you know, she kept it all the way through from Christmas to Cheltenham and that. No, I, 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 not necessarily. They are different. Treat them a bit differently. So, so what were your thoughts on her run at, um, at, at um, Punchestown? I think it was a bit the same as Cheltenham, really. It was, you know, she just she wasn't good enough on the day. Um, again, to be fair, she's had back surgery as well. Um, which has always been an issue with her. It has. And you'd think for us that actually jumps as well as she does. And I think both at Cheltenham and Pudgestan, she wasn't jumping with her. And in, in the Christmas hurdle, to be honest, she wasn't jumping like she can do. I mean, at Newcastle, you won't see anything faster, quicker or sharper over a hurdle. And actually, after that, she she didn't hurdle with her old proficiency and you know that's what we hope we've got that we've sort of sorted out if she's jumping really well then you know she's really well let's focus on a few of, of last season's novice hurdlers there are obviously lots of them to go through so we'll just spin through um, and you can give us your, your thoughts on and where they might go um do start obviously we know a lot about him because of his, his breeding um very impressive on on his debut and also ran well when also up to, to, to greater company at entry last back end yeah, he was very unlucky last year. I mean, he won his first start very impressively. I think it was a good race. But at the time, I think everybody thought it was a very good race. Um, and then he had a horrific accident um, where he staked himself. Um, I mean, he was miraculous. He was lucky to survive. And, it was, and, and to get him back last season was all, even more miraculous. But we were getting back and... and I just wasn't sure. It was probably a mistake. I probably should have gone two and a half at Aintree. I don't say to one, but he'd have found it easier. But I'm sure he learnt a lot at Aintree. He ran a very good race uh, over a trip that was definitely too short for him. I would think we're looking at two and a half. At the moment, we're inclined to stay over hurdles and just see what he's, you know, where he could go. He's only had two runs in his life. So it'd be quite tough to be going straight over fences. So uh, we're minded at the moment to stay hurdling. Does he still show, or does he show you a ho uh, on the gallops that he is a horse with an immense amount of talent? Do you feel that he can go right to the very top? Well, he can. I mean, it, it, we're not really just doing that much at the moment that you're asking on those sort of questions. But he is. In, he, he looks fantastic. He jumps really, really well. I mean, we've only schooled him over hurdles, but he's something else. I mean, he could go chasing tomorrow. But whether that's the right thing to do at the moment, I'm not quite sure. What was the reason in, in going straight over hurdles? Because obviously you could have gone the, from the right. He, he could, but I mean, he was five then, so there didn't seem a lot of point. And he jumped so well, we thought we might as well get on with it. I mean, in hindsight, I wish he'd had one bumper and then gone wrong, because then he'd have been a novice hurdler for this year. But um, which would have, um, he really would have shaken up the. Ballymore betting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how far forward is he? Yeah, what's about how far off? Oh, he is he? quite forward. Yeah, no, he's he's done quite a bit. We just need the rain. I mean, we can't these big boys like that. We're just having to wait and wait and wait. Unfortunately. Get shut the other way there. Shut the other way there. Table. She she's a fascinating bear. Uh, she came over. 
sort of in the spring or early spring really and we got it going and I have to say I thought it was the slowest horse I'd ever seen um, and we've seen a few I can tell you I mean absolutely ridiculous and I did warn quite a lot of people it does have a huge number of f mem owners and actually I've got a lot of mates who've got legs in Fable I don't know why but lots and has Fable I said listen I've got to be honest with you I think it's useless I could watch the start of the gallop come back and have breakfast and go and watch the end <laughs> um, and while all the others are washing off here um, anyway we gave her a run first time and she was second and I was very very pleased and she then won twice really nicely um, it's just a question Nico and I disagree at the moment I, she's not badly handicapped actually you know I'd, I'd be interested to see how much further she could go over hurdles and see if she isn't a at least a listed mare you know um, to get her some black type would be priority um, but she could jump fences tomorrow so we're just sort of um, we're tiptoeing to see which way we go really I'd quite like to give her one run over hurdles anyway just to see where she belongs in that category because she might just be quite high um, if not we'll go chasing and obviously nice to see Burz win the Cesarowicz on Saturday when it with Caracciola and, and land in lights and for even more versatile horses I suppose yeah it's I mean you know it's a bit of fun it was a, it was um, the Stafford family's idea in the middle of the summer while the horse was in the field I thought well, this is crazy first of all he wants soft ground you probably won't get soft ground at Newmarket and how am I going to get him ready in August when again the ground isn't going to I need a prep race and all sorts of things and I thought that I thought it was a pretty crackers idea but I've luckily been wrong so many times that we ignore most things um, he had a, it went well I mean he was literally he was he came in on the 12th of July so he was under 12 weeks from the field to Newmarket which is not bad going without a run he had one race course gallop luckily it was one weekend it rained and um, we took him to Newbury on the Sunday morning um, just for a gallop Reggie rides him every day rode him in the gallop I didn't I didn't want other horses he just went round on his own um, he didn't want jockeys on him he just wanted to go and have a nice time I think that helped him a lot and we just had a very clean run having to be pretty hard on him he was having to gallop twice a week to get there and uh, I suppose we did get there he was fit um, which was, is a fair thing for a horse like that to do first time out but the interesting bit really was his, the improvement throughout last season was dramatic um, the important bit was the, the he proved his stamina at Aintree so I think that's opened up and so he did at Newmarket too so what have you got earmarked for him over hurdles this nothing. year? nothing I mean you'd, you'd probably say you'd start like to start at two and a half although he's had a run of a two and a quarter under his belt so do you even try him straight over three? Um, we'll see. We'll see what comes up when comes up. So would you see him as as a you know a staying hurdle candidate? I well, know it's a long well, way down the line, did but you last sort of year. But I mean, he improved so much throughout the year. You wondered whether he might be. Um, we'll just have to see. He's an entertaining horse to train. Um, he put his ears back and bite you for all for just for fun. I mean, the morning after this is Irish, I went into his box to feed his legs. He chased me straight out. <laughs> um, but that's, that's Buzz in good form. Um, Reggie rides him and does him. I mean, you know, it, it, those sort of relationships you get between a, a person and a horse makes a lot of difference. And, you know, he made a big difference to this horse's life. He's become more amenable. He's, he's had issues. He's had a lot of issues. That's why you would never run him on fast ground. But, you know, he, he, he could be anything, particularly when the ground is soft. Um, lots of people watching today would, would love uh, an update on Bouvet Dare. He, sadly, he ran into a fantastic race at Aintree. 
and I thought he was very unlucky not to win, really, um, in that he was travelling beautifully, nicely covered up. The horse in front of him at the last on the far side fell and suddenly opened up the door and he couldn't resist it. <laughs> and off he went. And that, unfortunately, was far too soon. And then there was a loose horse that went all over the place. It carried him out. It took. Then Buzz was the other side of the track. It went and knocked him over. Then came and gave Boober Dare another thump. He ran a great race. And we were looking forward to going. He was going three miles at Punchdown. And he picked up a nasty injury here. So he's not back here yet. Um, I did see him passing by. Um, the other day, he, he stopped off for a night at APs. He's been over here having some treatment. Um, so I saw him then. The, the leg feels good, and hopefully he'll be back. I mean, it's it's going to be a long shot because, you know, age creeps up on us all. I mean, it's rather like Altio has retired and he's the same age. So, but we're persevering with Bouverdale at the moment. So it'd be lovely to get him back. Also, be lovely to see Pentland Hills back again. We haven't seen him since the 2020 Unibet Challenge. No, that's or... right. Um, he, unfortunately, he had a tendon injury last year. That He came back into training and the, uh, we scanned the tendon. Brilliant. But actually, unfortunately, he was lame. Um, and he has a sort of an injury that's holding him up now for a couple of months. Um, but hopefully he'll be back around... I, I would have gone not as chasing with him this season because he's the most spectacular jumper. But I think he will be back hopefully this season, the middle of, you know, before Christmas. Um, but he won't give him a full season of offences. So I think if we concentrate just on hurdles for now and then maybe let him go not as chasing even in the spring and take him on from there. It'd be great to see him back. He's very good.